Jim and Tammy Faye's story was full of debauchery and degenerate acts among consenting and non-consenting adults this year. And if this little particular part of 1987 had been applied, it would have been written by Tennessee Williams. Second kind of decadent year. Thank you very much. I'd like to read you from my latest book. It's titled Tandy on a Hot Tin Roof. My <laughs> play begins in Rusty Ford Mill, South Carolina, a decaying monument to the ancient feudal south. My play opens in the main dining room of the estate of Heritage USA, Pentecostal Taj Mahal, whose once majestic walls have been numbered up well by the ravages of grinding winds, fermented urine, and crusted crow feces. <laughs> Savage time like a brutal lover has shaped her virgin smoothness. Into the prodigal sun, brick vapor, mean, short, or physically and emotionally. He lives noticeably from his crippled spirit and seethes in disdain for his wife, the lusty Tammy. Tammy the cat. Passionate but frightened woman, so afraid to face the world, she shields her high self behind a fortress of cosmetics. Tammy the chameleon. Her love for Brick has reached the point of an intolerable pain, but she only suspects what everyone else jokes openly about. Brick's infidelity with the lovely Jessica Dubois, whom the ministers call that painted hard eye with long shoreman's hands, thick and knotty brown with rough, scaly, stucco knuckles. The months of constant weeping have taken a toll on Tammy. She's scarred. The skin of her once youthful face now hangs like breasts on a 40 year old Bourbon Street hooker. She's begun using drugs more and more to hide the effects of her crying, and taken to using cosmetics more and more to hide the effects of the drugs. A vicious cycle she cannot escape. Her sorrow has grown immeasurably lately, for Brick has begun bragging slyly during his sermons of his constantly conquest of the lovely Jessica. Although most assume that she returns for exaggeration, the truth is she loathes the baby spread. He makes love to her like an albino lad. Stomach every time she thinks of him on top of her, wheezing, not even grunting, just gasping like an infant with a mouthful of mush. However, her disgust for Brick stops just short of his wallet. For in fact, it was his wealth that first attracted her to him. Or, more accurately, it was the wealth of his papa, Big Daddy Swaggart. A relentlessly dominating bull of a man who grunts and frosts as he preaches out his bombastic ululations of eminent love while wildly flailing his holy for his old world weapon. He looks much more like a primordial man than a fiery stick than a bringer of the word. And his iconoclastic rule of the television ministry has made him many foes. For he is one of these Christians that love all men but hate each other. However, there is a lust in Big Daddy's heart, a lust he has not been subtle about, a lust for the busty tan. On this very day, there is a sense of finality in the dense, salty airs of the PTL estate. Brick's consistent fidelity has finally pulled tough the very thin cords of compassion in Big Daddy's soul, and at the new meal, he caustically announces, Boy! Your actions are not brought straight to us all over here. And I'm talking about those sleazy encounters you've been having with that Dubois or strunk that tried to cock you by the right dick too, huh? She's a secretary, Daddy. Yeah, secretary's tight, boy. And for a whole lot less than $265,000, son. <laughs> Tammy begins to cry. Brick tries to come her, but she leaves the room. Brick tries to follow her, but Big Daddy shouts, Don't you me, boy! I got something to say to you. My heart is sick to have to mention this. But with the shame you brought on us here, I'm going to have to ask you to leave here today. I want you to leave the ministries. 
and I want you to leave the BPL, and I want you to leave the charity in the USA. You throw me out with a lot of old lady gossip, daddy, not gossip, boy, but facts. Facts as cold and hard as the winds from a blue northern. Facts like how you come home limping last night. How you sprain your ankle break. I was preaching a revival, Daddy. Got so moved by the Spirit, I slipped and fell. Preaching a revival at four in the morning. You hurt yourself trying to jump onto that new wild, hard, strumpet, concubine, prostitute, that unbelieving, being a worldly woman who publishes her titties in a magazine next to an interview with a communist. Well, you ain't no better, Daddy, the way you go grabbing after my Tammy. Big Daddy slaps bread. She's not your Tammy, boy. You lost your grip on that woman a long time ago. You don't start a fire in the oven and go eat out. Tammy's a ripe pear filled with juice, a woman of passion and pity, a bonbon dipped in mascara. But you, you'd rather prance around with that big-handed, fair-skinned Jezebel who publicizes the very nipples of her chest. So that's why you throw me out, Daddy, just because of a little sin. Oh, that's, that's not it, Rick, but you make me laugh, boy. Now, infidelity's a sin, and a Christian must forgive that. But the truth is, your ministry is losing money, and that a Christian cannot forgive. How money goes for good works, Daddy? Good works? Fancy cars, air-conditioned dog houses, amusement parks are not good works, boy. These works should be spent on religious separate like right wing lobby groups and bribing the FCC. Works that promote the teachings of Christ. No, you had your chance and you blew it, Rick. You're out. I'm turning control over to your brother, Jerry. Follow me. Oh, goodness, Daddy, now my show has just become an hour of big money. Hell, what was it with you, boy? An hour of selling sock certificates and memorabilia? Ah, uh, you're out, Rick, but I wouldn't worry too much about you. I hear Nightmare could always use a co-host. Tammy begins to weep again. And we can hear the gentle patter of rain against the windows of the state. Rick looks disdainfully at his father. See what she started in there, Daddy? She'll be up all night with this fever. Be like the Mississippi rising in here tonight. She's liable to wake up the whole town and she starts praising. She may even start singing. I better call Dr. Oral to come and give her something to help calm her down. If he could cure her, that would be a miracle, Daddy. <laughs> you stop her crying. <laughs> they both chuckle like men. The end.